he who says, I love God, but not my neighbor, is a liar. St. Paul would say. My dear sisters and brothers, it's not actually St. Paul, but it is St. John in his epistle that would say, he who says, I love God and not my neighbor is a liar. And what John said is merely a commentary. And the text is here in the gospel of the day. You and I are aware that time and again, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the leaders of the people of that time of Jesus, would pose questions to Jesus, not because they sought an answer, not because they sought clarity, not because they wanted to understand the mind and the heart of Jesus, but precisely because they wanted to trip him and trap him. And so when they ask a question, Jesus would always answer with a counter question. And yet, today, Jesus goes beyond what is expected of him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? And look at the answer of Jesus. He takes one verse from the book of Deuteronomy and another from Leviticus and says, this is the greatest commandment. It's like a coin, he says. It's got two sides, love of God and love of neighbor. Bala is a good friend of mine. We grew up together from our younger days. He loved the children. And any free time he had, he would play with them and teach them the way of life. He enjoyed spending time with kids. But on one particular day, as his house was under construction and fresh concrete was being laid to the floor, he was busy keeping children away from himself and from that space for obvious reasons. But when he was engaged in a conversation with me, six or seven children ran across the room leaving their tiny footprints on the newly laid concrete. And my friend was furious. He chased them down the lane till they disappeared around the corner. And when he came back, still puffing and panting and fuming with anger, I asked him in my own way, hey, but I thought you loved children. And he turns to me and says, yes, I love children, but I don't love them in concrete. <laughs> you and I love our neighbor. But the question is, do we love them in concrete? In a tangible way? In a perceptible way? The love that we have for God does it translate into love of neighbor? To live with saints in heaven is all glory, but to live with them on earth is quite a different story. And that brings us to our neighbor, maybe our obnoxious neighbor. I hope our neighbors are not listening. But that is something that you and I need to ask ourselves. As that existentialist philosopher would say, I love humanity, but not its people. I love God, but the question is, do I love God in my sister, in my brother? And so the question that comes our way today is this. You love God, yes. And God says to me and to you, I know you love me. 
but do you love me in your neighbor? Many years ago, I was at St. John's, San Lorenzo. I had just come into the country 18 years ago. And my pastor, Father Mike Lacey, gave me some do's and don'ts for survival for a new kid on the block. And he said, it was somewhere in September or December, he said, when the doorbell rings after 6 p.m., never answer it. You know, I'm a good guy, and I obey. And there I was in my room in the first floor, or second floor, and the doorbell rang. Once, I ignored. Twice, I ignored that too. After all, I need to obey. And then it rang a third time. And the words of my mother kicked in. Never turn a hungry person away. Who knows? It could be Jesus she taught us. And so, conveniently, I forgot about my pastor's advice and went open the door, and there was this guy, shabbily dressed, hair unkempt. He was looking famished. Do you have something to eat? I said to myself, who knows? It could be Christ. And so, I went into the kitchen and came home with a full loaf of bread. And by the way, I don't eat bread, but my pastor does. <laughs> I gave it to him. And he looked at me and said, it's good, but it feels so dry. I said, you're right. I went in and came with a bunch of bananas and gave it to him. And he thanked me. And before he turned to go, he said, do you have some change for a cup of coffee? The night is cold. And so I went up picked up the coins that I had for parking and put it into his hands. And as he turned to go, who knows? He could be Christ. So I shouted across to him and says, Hey, you are not Jesus, are you? And imagine, he stopped, turned around and said, I'm not Jesus. I'm Jesus. Well, I did laugh about it. But then the reality of it hit me. Today, that may be the word that I need to hear. The message that I need to listen to. The value that I need to embrace. The pandemic has revealed many a secret thought from many a mind. It has set geographical neighbor against neighbor, relatives against relatives, and we are not able to walk into a home, unable to shake hands, much less hug or kiss our own friends and family, unless you've received your two shots and maybe now your booster shot. And as you sit flipping through the pages of the channel, or going through the pages of the newspaper, you come across fights and cops being called to restaurants and even to airplanes over the wearing of masks and even vaccinations. And so today the question that comes our way today is this, do I see Jesus in Jesus? Or do I see Jesus in my neighbor? And so the Lord, I believe, tells me, I don't know about you, love William, your neighbor. Thy Muslim neighbor, thy black neighbor, thy immigrant neighbor, thy addicted neighbor, thy gay or straight neighbor, thy obnoxious neighbor and what would be your response I don't know if this is good news or bad news but when you and I come to the altar bearing our gifts or when you show up before the Lord to offer your gifts he's going to ask me and you and where is your brother your sister 
And then, do you have to convince the Lord that you did your best to love your neighbor? I love God. You love God. But do you and I love God in our neighbor? And do we love our neighbor in concrete?